Hey guys, uh, today I want to show off something I've been working on for a little while that I'm really excited about. It is an ESP32 microcontroller, but what sets this apart from other microcontrollers is that it has a built-in PIR motion sensor. Uh, this is really, really cool actually. It's something I've been wanting to uh, do for a little while. And if you've ever used a uh, PIR motion sensor in, in projects before, you know you have to use, you know, you have to get a microcontroller and then, you know, an actual PIR sensor and then you have to wire it up. And then if you want to put this in a 3D printed case, you got to design it and it gets really kind of big and bulky really fast. All of this is in this little board now. In fact, the sensors themselves are extremely similar in size. So a few stats about this guy. Um, the PIR sensor has a detection distance of about 15 feet or 5 meters and 120 degree field of view, which means you can detect motion from a variety of different angles, which is awesome. Uh, a few other things about this is that it has a USB-C connector for programming and you can run the uh, microcontroller off of it and uh, you can also charge the LiPo battery off of this, which I'll get to here in a second. Uh, it obviously has a 3.3 volt regulator, which means you can run the whole thing off of USB or off the 5 volt source pen if you want to plug something in to charge it that way, or charge it off of LiPo if you uh, use the included JST connector, which looks something like this. The reason why I don't put this on the board by default is that if you put your pin headers in here and then you want to put this in a breadboard, this thing gets in the way. But it's nice to have in case you want to, after you've, you know, done a bunch of testing on a breadboard and you have everything working perfectly, then you can solder on your JST connector, plug in your LiPo battery, and then you've got a remote motion sensor that's Wi-Fi compatible. So, yeah, we've got the, and then on top of that, we've got a battery charge circuit, which it means if you do have your LiPo battery and eventually it runs out and you need to recharge it, you don't have to disconnect it. You can literally just plug in a USB uh, cable through a power source and it'll charge the LiPo battery through the board itself. There's an LED charge indicator here, so when it's solid and on, it means it's charging, and then when it goes off, it means the battery's been fully charged. So uh, the other thing is it has the ESP32 S2 module. This is the mini module, which is much smaller than the standard S2 module, which I have here. So this, the board itself is actually almost the same size as just a uh, normal S2 module. I mean, a little bit bigger, but you get kind of get the idea. So this one uses the Mini. So all in all, it's very compact. I've also got a few mounting holes that I've put on here so that it's easy to mount to a case or, you know, if you need to stick this on something else or whatever your use case may be. Uh, this little setup would be really handy if you've got props or cosplay or Halloween decorations or you know whatever your imagination or uh, you can think of where you'd want to have you know something triggered off of motion and you want to do it through uh, an ESP3 ESP32 microcontroller excuse me uh, there are a bunch of GPIO pens broken out obviously We've got I squared C um, a couple of 3.3 volt lines in case you want to power off you know another sensor or whatever else you're doing and then obviously some ground lines so speaking of the battery setup, I'm going to jump over the computer and I'm going to show you some graphs I've taken of how this does uh, with battery consumption. Some people may not need the, you know, to know that or care how much battery it uses, but for some people that may be important. So I'm going to jump over the computer and I'm going to show you that real quick. Okay, so I have got this hooked up to a power profiler and what this allows uh, me to do is to measure the power consumption uh, that the board uses uh, when it's on battery and so I'm gonna have this run just for a second right now it is in deep sleep mode um, essentially I've had this program to uh, wake up when it takes motion connect to Wi-Fi turn on a GPIO pen and then go back into deep sleep mode and so we can get some measurements from that. So I'm going to wave my hand in front of the sensor here, wake it up, and then 
we go back to sleep. And I will stop it and we will get some measurements here. Okay. So in deep sleep right here, when it's not doing anything and it is sleeping, obviously, it uses about 45 microamps in deep sleep. Um, this is actually really, really good. And the reason why it is is because uh, it's mainly from the PIR sensor. Um, they do make some PIR sensors that are more efficient in deep sleep, but they get exponentially more expensive, the better that they get. Um, so the one that I did find and I'm using, I'm actually really, really happy with. It's a great bargain for what I pay for it. Um, price to performance is very good. So 45 microamps basically when it's sleeping. Um, when it turns on and connects to Wi-Fi. Oh, actually stop. Okay. Uses about 80 microamps. Not too bad. And that is connecting to Wi-Fi, obviously. So, um, what we can do with this information is we can plug it into a battery calculator, and it'll give us a really rough idea of how long um, the B motion will st uh, last on battery, depending on the battery size and stuff. There's a, a million factors that play into this, but at least this will give you a rough idea. So let me pull that up. This is the battery calculator that I found and use. I really, really like it actually. And in fact, I think I'll put a link in the description in case you want to play around with this yourself, but it's, it's easy to use. Um, so we can plug in that information we got from the uh, power profiler and we'll get some rough ideas here. So if you pair this with a 1500 milliamp hour LiPo battery and it uses 80 milliamps when it's on connected to Wi-Fi, and it's active for 100 seconds out of the day. What that equates to is basically uh, on that power profiler, uh, when it kicked on, it took about five seconds for it to connect to Wi-Fi, turn on GPIO pin, and then go back to sleep. So it'd be, if it connects, if it detects motion 20 times a day, it'd be on for 100 seconds. This is just an example. And deep sleep current was 45 microamps. And so what that gives us is 441 days of uh of battery life basically now again this is extremely dependent on what size battery you use what do you have it do uh, when you turn it on you know when it's turned on and programmed um, all those things I have a cat at my feet crying at me I don't know if you can hear that I apologize if you can but yeah anyways this will give you a um, rough idea now if you wanted to use this without Wi-Fi I know some people you know, if you have a prop or something or whatever, and you don't need the Wi-Fi functionality, I know that it uses about 26 milliamps um, to turn on and do whatever and then go back to sleep. Um, that, you know, you're, you're basically doubling, or more than doubling. No, it's about doubling. But you're looking at over two years if, if that was the case. Again, completely dependent on a, a million factors, but at least, at least this will show that, you know, the battery will last more than, like, you know, an hour. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's where the, uh, that's that. So, um, I think that's basically it. Uh, if you're interested in the B-Motion, I do have a link in the description to my Tendi store where I am selling them. So check that out if, uh, if you'd like. Um, I also have a Discord group, um, link in the description as well. If you have questions or, um, you know, want to just hang out, that's cool as well. Obviously, if you have questions, you can put them in the comments as well, and I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. So thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you guys on the next one.